that evening from Epcot. We got a little bit of time before the train comes, so I thought we'd head over to Epcot and see what we can eat. Book, living in the land it looks like we have some rain coming <sighs> I did bring a raincoat though It's a five minute wait, y'all. Five minute wait. So I was trying to see if I can make my way over to Canada. Get that steak. Everybody look at me. Alright. So the air conditioning in here feels so, so good. Oh, it's gonna start getting busy here at Epcot and Hollywood Studios because Magic Kingdom was closed tonight for the Halloween party. Yeah, it's like, it's like what we don't even know. It's like... Oh. Standby entrance is five minutes long. I have a lightning lane, but I don't think I need it. Systems is the rainforest, home to the most amazing concentration of life on our planet. These dense and beautiful forests cover only a tiny portion of the Earth's surface, but they contain more than half of its plant and animal species. Rainforests are also extremely rich in productive living systems, providing us with oxygen, food, medicine, and other elements essential to our lives. We got some more alligators here, crocodiles. In the desert, nature has created a very different, but no less beautiful living system. And while this arid landscape may seem lifeless, it is very much alive. The plants and animals that have learned to survive in these harsh conditions make use of what little water they can find and avoid the scorching rays of the relentless sun. The American prairie once appeared as desolate as the desert, but over time, rainwater and nutrients gradually penetrated the hard surface of this land. Even the hooves of the mighty buffalo helped create the rich soil and it will one day become home to the American farm.
forces at work on the land. Human. Welcome to our living laboratory, where scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are exploring innovative ways to produce bountiful harvests now and into the future. The tropics are home to the greatest diversity of plants on the planet. Many of these, like papaya, bananas, cacao, coffee and rice, are well known around the world. These are just a few of the edible plants that have been an important source of nutrition for people living in the tropics. Many are rich in vitamins and minerals, while others are well adapted to growing in less than ideal conditions. Some, like the water lily, thrive in wet, swampy areas and waterways. All parts of this plant, even the flower petals, are edible. The starchy root of the plant has long been used to make flour for baking. One day, many of these lesser-known tropical plants may be as important as the bananas growing on both sides of the boat. More than 28 million tons of bananas are eaten annually, making it the most popular fruit in the world. The sustainable system we're using here recycles the water in the tanks. As a result, we're able to save millions of gallons each year. Our small fish farm produces nearly 5,000 pounds of fish each year to serve in restaurants around Walt Disney World. Innovations like this one can play an important role in our efforts While there are more than 50,000 edible plant species in the world, most of us are only familiar with the handful that make up our everyday diet. The common grains growing here, wheat, maize, sorghum, and millet, plus rice, account for nearly two-thirds of our global food consumption. Learning how to increase yields of these staples is an important goal of research around the world. These plants are definitely on their way up. Innovative growing techniques like these increase yields while more efficiently using resources like water, fertilizer, and pesticides. Another innovation at work here is our integrated pest management program. By populating our greenhouses with beneficial insects that prey on harmful pests like aphids and flies, we are significantly reducing our reliance on conventional pesticides. We're growing these crops using our nutrient film system. This technique precisely controls and recycles water and nutrients. With it, we can produce over 27,000 heads of lettuce a year in this one small area. Some of our best ideas have been inspired by nature, like these fruit and vegetable trees. By growing these ground plants vertically, we can increase yields and better control diseases. These crops taste as good as they look. In fact, we serve more than 15 tons of produce from our greenhouses and restaurants here at the land every year.
The future of agriculture may include innovative ideas like this vertical growing system. Plants grown in this way use a fraction of the space required by traditional growing methods. That saves water and increases production. The aquaponics system on your left combines hydroponics with aquaculture. The fish provide a natural source of fertilizer for the plants, and the plants help keep the water clean for the fish. It's another great way to produce more while using less. In our lab, Epcot scientists are working with the U.S. Department of Agriculture on a number of innovative projects. The goal of these efforts is to produce... All right, so the man my hand was so fun. I really liked how they um, did the vegetables and stuff and the different countries that we're using what they're growing inside living in land. It is thundering really bad. So we're going to make our way over to um, some of the stores and that around the uh, World Showcase right now just in case it starts to pour. That's the people mad rush of people leaving the parks just because it's supposed to be a storm. Gotta come this way. We're going right over there to that Joffrey's and see if they have the thing. Alright. So here's the monorail. I'll show you where to go to get an Uber in case you ever need to come and get an Uber. There's a good amount of people coming into the park today. Not sure it's doing much, but it's something, right? So anyway, you're gonna walk down here. Here's my coffee. Not sure that my raincoat is doing much, but I've got something. I made the right choice leaving. Um, when we did, I don't think the boots are open. And it's like, and woo! Got some thunder. Okay, I have to do this all on my phone. But let me show you. You're gonna walk out by the barn and out here to have my raincoat on because it's too windy. Okay, so you're gonna come here by buses. I'm gonna go under here to order my Uber. Um, but it's right past the happened. So I wanted to come on here and just kind of finish up that video. You guys, it was so funny. I should have videoed it. I was running to the Uber and it was pouring so bad. And I was just so, I was soaked. It was so funny, but that's real life. So it's not the best uh, video, but I thought it was kind of funny. It's real life. That's how it happens sometimes in the park. So um, I do want to say that if you are um, headed to Disney this week with Hurricane Milton, um, and you can cancel and your schedule allows it, I would definitely reschedule. Um, we're still not sure where this is going to hit. It's gonna hit somewhere between Tampa and Fort Myers. So, and it's gonna go across the state. So definitely, if you can, I would. It's better safe than sorry. I know there's a lot of content creators that are like, come during a hurricane, but I don't know. I'd rather be safe than sorry, honestly. But so Disney is waiving the cancellation fee. So definitely um, take advantage of that if you can. I understand you can't always do that. But I think um, the storm is supposed to come in on Tuesday, Wednesday. Who knows what's going to actually happen. But anyway, be safe. And I'll see you all later.